Hi, everyone. Dr. B here again of AskTheDentist.com. Uh, today, we're meeting again with David Lin. We've we've spoken to him before. Uh, I always get excited because he is the go-to guy for oral microbiome. Uh, as a clinician, I always have a lot of a lot of questions. Uh, the oral microbiome is expanding. We're we're learning more about it, partly because our testing is is getting better. David's the co-founder and chief scientific officer at Bristol, if you may remember. Uh, he has a PhD in microbiology, immunology, ten years of molecular biology microbiology, genomics, synthetic biology experience across uh, academia, public health, and and the entire industry. I think he started out with, uh, his first passion was the gut, the gut microbiome. Now he's uh, on the on the front end of it, the oral microbiome. He has extensive background in infectious disease and genomics, which is wh where we go with testing. Uh, and I think you have 11 peer-reviewed publications. Is that right? Six of them, you were first author, right? It might be twelve now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's uh, around there. Yeah, I gotta I gotta look those up. I may have read a few, but I'd love to put them on our website with a little uh, explanatory paragraph summary for those who want to get get real nerdy. But today we're gonna talk. We've we've talked about the oral microbiome. We've done a CE course together for providers. Uh, the providers need, like myself, we need a lot of instruction on the oral microbiome. It's that exciting. It's a game changer. It's gonna change how we practice dentistry and how we look at oral health and and disease in the mouth, even disease in the rest of the body, because it's all connected. But today we're going to try and be very narrow. We're going to talk about pro and prebiotics. There are a lot of questions there. I get them from Dennis, from all the functional providers that I work with. Um, and, and, and of course, from followers on Instagram and readers, it's, it's confusing to people. Uh, so we're going to define pro and prebiotics. Let's first talk about the whole weed seed and feed concept. I think people need to understand that this oral microbiome, like the gut microbiome is like a garden and gardens are very complicated. They vary based on time of year, pH of the soil, acidity, uh, pests, you know, bugs, uh, uh, angle of the sun, shade, sun. I mean, you know, it's crazy. It's complicated. So explain that whole weed feed and seed thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's exactly like you said, it's just a garden. Um, and gardens are extremely complicated, right? Like, you don't realize it, but your garden, it may not look like it has weeds, but it always has weeds. Yeah. There's always some low level of weeds that are, you know, in the pockets and you, you throw mulch all over the place to try and prevent them. Right. Right. Um, and, and you grow, like you, you pack your garden with plants that you really like. So you got fruits, you know, you got your you know, certain shrubs that you like, um, you got your flowers, um, and you try and fill all that space. Right. The idea is to fill it all with the good stuff and to prevent the weeds from overtaking but you know every once in a while a weed will pop up and and uh the hope is that you can catch it before it becomes 50 before it becomes 100 because you know by the time it, it expands it becomes unmanageable and then right. at that time you really just got to burn down the whole garden and start over right difficult um, to reverse yeah yeah um so you know <laughs> prebiotics and probiotics are are just ways to manage those weeds and ways to increase or to to plant certain types of plants that will prevent other weeds from coming in. So when uh, at Ask the Dentist, we always talk about feeding your good guys. Uh, how would how would that look? I mean, yeah. feeding the good guys. What does it do? What does it accomplish? Yeah. And then what about the bad guys? Um, if you're feeding the good guys, aren't you feeding the bad guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is such an interesting topic. So um, I think one of the most obvious like. Uh, uh, the most obvious phenomenon is that if you if you feed bacteria sugar, because uh, all bacteria they just love sugar. Okay, um, the the weeds they just happen to grow a lot faster because they're actually pretty small and invasive. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and so just by feeding all these your garden sugar, uh, those weeds will eventually overcome everything else because everything mm -hmm. else uh, needs a little a little more uh, nourishment to survive. Okay? Right. Um, and in contrast, you can feed the garden um, nitrate. Okay, so the, there were a few papers that showed that if you just feed prebiotic nitrate, like insoluble, insoluble nitrate, in your diet, um, you can actually increase the levels of certain nitrate-reducing bacteria. Um, and these nitrate reducers produce compounds that actually help to fight the weeds. And so this is very interesting interplay between the two, um, where some anaerobic pathogens, they don't really reduce nitrate. They reduce other things uh, to, to generate energy. And uh, the, the commensal ones that 
prevent them from taking the space really like nitrate. Um, the way that evolved is we don't really understand it, but we think it has to do a lot with diet uh, and the way that humans have evolved to mm -hmm. we're supposed to eat certain types of foods, certain types of leafy greens. Um, but, you know, uh, now, obviously, with all the processed foods, uh, we've completely mismanaged this. And uh, a right. lot of people have oral dysbiosis because of. Right. That. And it's not um, it's not just sugar. It's like. Uh, crackers, goldfish, saltine yeah. crackers, uh, oh, yeah. cereals, breakfast cereals, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, highly processed. And so the more processed a food is, the more likely that, well, not the more likely, but the more readily the bacteria is able to consume it. Precisely. And, and that allows them to, I love that analogy that, that you, that we keep going back to, there are always weeds in the garden. You may not see them, but they're in the soil. And that's like the oral microbiome. They're good and bad players. But as long as everything is kind of well balanced or symbiotic is the, I guess, a good term, then everything goes well. But when the weeds take over, literally in the garden, if you just look at it from a physical uh, perspective, there's no room for the good guys to grow and and flourish. So, so it, it's all about what you feed them. Now, if you're, can you selectively feed the good guys and not benefit or feed the bad guys? That's a good question. Um... I think by nature of competition, um, there's, uh, they all want to live in the same space, right? So if you just imagine two different species uh, living on the surface of a tooth, um, they're, they're competing for nutrients. So Streptococcus mutans versus Streptococcus gordonii. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in oral dysbiosis, let's say you're completely out of balance and you have a lot of Streptococcus mutans, then it's more likely for that to take the food and turn it or take the whatever nutrient it is and turn it into something that's useful for that microbe. Okay. Um, but there are ways to shift the balance because these microbes like certain niches. So Streptococcus mutans, it actually likes a really low pH. It likes uh, acidified environments. So right. the ways that you can selectively feed things is actually to change that equation. So you just shift the pH, you make it a little higher. Mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, strep mutans is really bad at metabolizing. It doesn't, it, it doesn't thrive in that kind of environment, whereas Streptococcus gordonii is really good at high pH environments. Um, and so uh, there are kind of ways to shift the balance and selectively feed uh, certain microbes. Um, but of course, it's really challenging if you don't know what's going on in your mouth. Um, and I think that's the state of most people. They just don't, they don't realize that the microbes are, are doing things <laughs> and affecting their mouth. Um, right. The, um, I mean, the problem, I mean, beyond food and diet, I mean, there are a lot of oral healthcare products that affect the pH of the mouth and it's just a poorly designed product or it has no science behind it. You know, we're, we're kind of in a rut with oral healthcare products. We've been using the same thing before there was any evidence or knowledge of the oral microbiome and the, how it works in the mouth. And so we're, it's, we're based, we're still using, I would say 80, 90% of the products out there are still based on that, that, uh, that idea that we need to disinfect the mouth. And, and it's crazy to me because the incidence of disease hasn't changed over the course mm -hmm. of hundreds of years, right? Right. Like yep. people are still getting periodontal disease ever since the incidence of processed foods, we actually have increased caries, right? But we're still using the same products we were using at that time. That makes no right. sense, right? Like, yeah. Well, that's a lot. Change. That's changing as we speak. Thank goodness. Uh, it'll be a slow change, but it's coming and it won't be from the big corporations, although they're watching all these boutique brands very carefully and they snatch up the ones that are making good products. Um, what about, okay. So we, we talked a little bit about feeding. Um, certainly if you have a garden, you can use, uh, you know, the Monsanto product, you know, very strong. I mean, that's probably a bad example, but you can, you can, there are weed killers, right? Yes, absolutely. Is that, that, that would be uh, weeding in the oral microbiome. How does that work? That's certainly not something you want to do every day. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the basis of oral care products currently, because that doesn't allow the oral microbiome to bloom and, and do its thing, you know, help remineralization of teeth and fight off infections, take down the influenza virus. I mean, there's so many different examples of what the oral microbiome can do, is doing, but so when when would you weed? I mean, is that a protocol that dentists should be? I mean, I I know the answer, but but not all the details. W weeding is important, especially if you come in and your and the oral microbiome is dysbiotic and sick. 
definitely. So how would definitely. that, how does that look? When do you do this? Yep. Um, and with what? <laughs> it's a good question. I think it depends what you have going on in your mouth. Um, but just for instance, someone comes in, they've been kind of neglecting their oral hygiene routine and they have gum inflammation. They don't realize their pockets, you know, maybe greater than four millimeters now. And they actually have periodontal disease, this mm -hmm. you know, defined characteristic periodontal disease. At that point, it's actually very difficult for you to now uh, maintain your garden because the weeds have now created a new pocket for themselves to do stuff mm -hmm. where you can't actually manage it just by using string floss. Okay. At that point, you got to be weeded. Mm -hmm. um, you got to use a stronger product. Uh, there's some evidence of, of different types of antimicrobials that do work. Um, so chlorhexidine is the one that's always been used, but we really don't like it because it's associated with hypertension because mm -hmm. it act, it, as most people are probably aware, antimicrobials actually don't just kill the, the microbes that you want to kill, they kill everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so in doing so, you're actually uh, using chlorhexidine, you're actually killing the nitrate reducers that are really important for maintaining blood pressure. And so there, there's an association between chlorhexidine use and, uh, and hypertension. Right. Um, chlorhexidine is a very strong prescription strength uh, mouthwash rinse that a lot of dentists use after surgery or, or for trying to reset the oral microbiome. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for the definition. I forgot. Yeah. I I forgot. A lot of people don't know what that is, but it stains yeah. your teeth. That's they know that um, product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, in other cases, it can be managed by, uh, some other broad antimicrobials. There is acetylpyridinium chloride, uh, that you can mm -hmm. be found in some mouthwashes over the counter. Isn't that a um, pesticide? Studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we're, we're, we're weeding. <laughs> we're weeding. Uh, there's also, um, so one of the easiest ones to use is probably just uh, hydrogen peroxide, uh, mm -hmm. just diluted hydrogen peroxide. It's probably the most natural ingredient that you could mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. um, because it's a really good oxidizer. It's right. really good at, at killing anaerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria are the ones that drive periodontal disease. Right. They don't like uh, oxygen. And oxygen. when you put hydrogen peroxide in the mouth, the byproduct is that, that bubbling, foaming, and that is oxygen. Tons of oxygen, no, right? Uh, and so it's great for weeding. And unfortunately, it also uh, doesn't. Uh, it's not as effective at killing aerobes because mm -hmm. aerobes are capable of tolerating the the levels of oxygen, right? Uh, because they live in aerobic environments. Yep. Um, so that's probably a more selective weeder. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what what's really interesting about the garden analogy is that um, you know using like Roundup. Uh, like the, a general right. leader that everyone's yeah, yeah. like, oh yeah, like I don't want weeds in my garden, so I'm going to go use Roundup. But now yeah. like 20 years later, you realize, well, Roundup actually gave you cancer. Yep. Um, and Roundup did things that you didn't realize it was doing. Mm -hmm. and, right. and that's exactly what these antimicrobials are doing too. They do things yep. that you don't realize that right. are affecting the rest of your health, the, the rest of your microbiome. And um, now we're trying to find things that don't do that, that, right. that are a lot more selective weeders. And that's what I like about the the Bristle test, the the company that you co-founded, uh, because not only do you establish what's going on in the mouth, what what are the populations, the micro, what, what's going on microbially in the mouth, um, uh, and, and a very high res picture of what's going on, um, but then you also have that coaching and recommendations, and that's so helpful uh, because a lot of dentists aren't don't have that information until they get the testing. Even when they see the results of the testing, they don't know what the protocol is. Like, do you weed, feed, or seed? And in what combination do you do that? So that's a very helpful thing. I'll, I'll put a link in the in the show notes if anyone's interested in, in doing that. I, I have talked to hundreds of people that have gone through that process. And, you know, they think the test is cool. You just spit into something, send it off. Yeah. Uh, it looks good to them based on what they've heard and what they've heard from me and and, um, but then when they get the coaching, they are literally blown away. I mean, they are, they, they have learned more than they have in 20, 30 years of seeing their dentist. And that's the power of testing, but the recommendations are really what you need. So let's talk about, so we've talked about, uh, weeding, we've talked about feeding. Let's talk about the concept of seeding. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's say your garden, uh, there's, you know, uh, maybe a disease plant that was in your garden and. Now, uh, this, uh, a bunch of weeds had, had killed this plant, and now you've plucked out all the weeds, but there's an empty gap there. Right. 
And guess what's going to happen if you don't fill it? The weeds well, come back. Yep. The weeds are yeah. <laughs> going to come back in the next, right. the, the blink of an eye. Um, so you got to fill it with something that you want to be there. And that that's planting a seed, right? Um, and in our case, uh, the idea is to fill it with the bacteria uh, that actually can help to prevent the weeds from coming back. So mm -hmm. um, I, I became, uh, I, I was taught this very interesting phenomenon recently. It's called the fruit circle or the fruit mm -hmm. guild. Yeah. Um, it's where you plant a tree, like your fruit tree. Um, but uh, if you just plant that tree, there's going to be weeds all over the place. And people mm -hmm. just like to fill it with mulch because they think, you know, let's just cover everything so nothing can grow. But, you know, there are weeds under there. You're going to get weeds under there. Mm -hmm. um, they just won't grow as quickly because the sun doesn't come through, but they're still there. But instead, what you can do is you can, in, instead of just filling with mulch, you actually plant lavender. Mm. Or, or you plant uh, other types of shrubs that actually help the, the peach tree grow. Right. And they prevent other types of pests from coming in and destroying your tree. Right. And that's exactly what it is. That's that's yeah. what we try to do. It's we look at your microbiome and we say, uh, you have these types of species, but you're missing this one thing that could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And let's try and find a way to boost that. Um, and, and depends on what the species is, you can feed it different types of uh, prebiotics. So there's different types of uh, amino acids that can help you. So some, right. some microbes really like arginine. Uh, some microbes like nitrate, like we talked about. Um, some microbes like if other types of prebiotics, there's fibers, there's there's all types of different ingredients that, that are right. classically in unprocessed foods uh, that people now lack because- Right, and of minerals, yeah. Um, yeah, probably uh, I had a vegetable garden uh, at my previous home. We were growing fava beans, all sorts of different types of tomatoes and peppers. And those are the best I've ever had. And it was the only time that I used the little fungi packets. Yes. You would put them underneath the soil and that yes. symbiosis. I mean, the roots would yes. see that and it was very beneficial. So that's the problem, not the problem. That's the, the concept or the issue with the oral microbiome. It's so complicated and practitioners have difficulty with it. I'm sure researchers do as well mm -hmm. because it's so multifactorial, three-dimensional. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're seeding, then there's a lot of feeding that has to go on, right? Yes. You can't just seed alone. You can't just feed alone. Yeah. You can't just weed alone. Yeah. And then, so how does at Bristol and, or how do you determine what combination of feeding, seeding, weeding to do? That would be what kind of probiotic do you add prebiotics? Do you add prebiotics first? Is there a sequence that you first want to do this, yeah. then this, then this, because if you get that out of sequence, then, you know, the, the, the weeds will never so have a chance of being knocked down. So, yep. so give me that in a, in a nutshell, what, what is the decision-making process? Absolutely. So, uh, depending on the oral microbiome, um, so let's go back to the periodontal disease example. Um, in that case, you would definitely have to weed first because the pocket is already occupied by all the weeds. Uh, so mm -hmm. you got to weed, uh, then you, you got to seed and feed pretty much at the same time because there's nothing there anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and in doing so, you know, you're selectively giving the things that you've seeded an advantage compared to the to the things that you weeded. Um, and, and that's the idea with like increasing the pH. If we know that you have high strep mutans, it's mm -hmm. like, okay, now we know what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna actually we're gonna feed and then we're gonna reseed. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case, we don't actually wipe everything out, we just right. we shift the, the the balance a little bit. Uh, so we give you arginine or we give you uh, xylitol plus uh, right. some other pH booster. Right, nitrates. And then, we, yep. and then we come in and we add more probiotics so that it'll fight, it'll it'll take up the space, uh, take right. up more of the space that strep mutans is now leaving. Um, so the, there's many different ways to do this. Uh, I think the most traditional way that people have always thought about it is actually just, uh, it's not just weeding, it's actually just blowing everything up and then reseeding and feeding. Um, we really don't like that approach. One reason that I don't like that approach is because sometimes when you blow everything up, you don't know what's coming back. And it's really hard to feed mm -hmm. things that you don't know are there. If you've used right. antimicrobials, if you burn down your whole garden and then you try and feed and seed all at the same time, well, you're going to get, you're going to get weird pockets of stuff and, and you don't really know what's there. Um, it's kind of a, forgive my language, but it's a crapshoot. Yep. Yep. No. And, and, but it's better than what we had before we knew all this. Right. Uh, sure. And it's going to be refined. So really the, the, I guess the takeaway point here is that 
any decision that any practitioner makes or a patient, anyone that's listening, and they want to optimize their oral microbiome, you really need a baseline. You need to know yeah. what, and, and all those decisions, whether you weed feed or seed and what diet and what, you know, uh, what pre and probiotic that you're going to use, you need to know what's going on in your mouth. So testing is crucial before and during and after. So how often do you recommend, let's say someone, whether it's a practitioner guided or a reader, a listener, and, and again, they can buy this test directly. This can all be done at home and you get a great report that gets comes back and it's very easy to understand. There are actionable items uh, and suggestions that are given, but how do you, um, how often would you test? Let's say the, the, the person who's testing is very proactive yeah. uh, and they're trying to make changes. I guess it depends on how they start off. I mean, are they healthy to begin yeah, with? It, it depends on yeah. the starting point. Right. Um, usually we recommend uh, three months for people who are starting off really poorly. Um, so if you have microbial dysbiosis in the form of halitosis or thrush, right. you know, cavities, yeah, cavities, gum disease, bleeding, any of that ulcerations, uh, canker sores. Yep. yep. Any, any weird manifestation in the mouth is right. usually in, it's yeah. usually a, yeast, a yeast infection, you know, yeah. a, a hairy tongue, a, a yellow tongue. I mean, a white tongue, yeah, it's right? Normal. Yep. It, it's become normalized because everyone's like, yeah, everyone gets cavities, right? But yeah. that's not, you, right. you realize that's, that's actually, that's an infection. Yeah. Um, if it, if you had a hole anywhere else in your body, you would probably say, I got to go to the doctor. Like exactly. this hole is just getting worse. Right. But when it's in your mouth, you're like, oh yeah, right. that's just going to heal because right. it's my or right. bleeding after brushing and you spit out, you see blood. If you, if you were brushing your arm and you saw blood, yeah. you would, you would panic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we recommend testing, uh, so that we can give you really good recommendations. And after, you know, hopefully if, if you're taking those recommendations to heart and you're, you're really trying to, to do it, um, usually you see change within 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so a three month cadence nice. of, of, uh, of testing and you'll know your progress because you've tested. Exactly. Uh, but you know, if you don't really have issues, we recommend probably a six month cadence because mm -hmm things change, your lifestyle changes, people get sick, uh, people's diets change. Um, a lot of things change over time, including mm -hmm. the oral microbiome. And mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like your, your uh, routine dental checkup. Right. Uh, you can't, you don't know what you can't see and you can't mm -hmm. see inside your mouth and mm -hmm. bristle allows you to do that. Right. I mean, you could have allergies all of a sudden, you've moved to a different area. You start mouth breathing light because you can't breathe through your nose and that's going to change your oral microbiome. Absolutely. pH levels will drop, the dryness or lack of saliva or the saliva concentrations are, are dropping. I mean, all of the, there's so many different ways that the oral microbiome can change uh, because the mouth is open to the environment. Uh, you could move to Michigan and, and you know, and, or, or to a dry environment, uh, you know, does the body adjust? Does the oral microbiome adjust? Probably, but there are things that, that, what if your diet changes? What all, I have a lot of listeners that are newly pregnant and their diet changes and all of a sudden their caries rate goes up. And, you know, there are all these myths about the babies robbing you of the mom of calcium, which is not true, but there are hormonal changes. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very complicated, uh, uh, yeah. you know, um, kind of paradigm of, of, of different things affecting everything. And, and so, but we're getting there. Uh, the beauty of it is that you don't need a dentist. I, I shouldn't be saying that you do need a dentist, but, but a lot of people can't afford dentistry, but you can go out and get your, your testing and you get this protocol and you can make changes. I wouldn't recommend that you do it without a dentist, but, mm -hmm. And at least there's information and knowledge there. Let's say you get a bad, you test, um, you get the results in a, in, a, in a week or two, and it's a really, you thought you were better off and you see that there are problems. You get this rating of you're very prone to getting cavities or gum disease, which means you're prone to getting Alzheimer's later in life. I mean, the, those connections can be made. But at least then, you know, oh, crap, I need to go see a dentist. Uh, that's good in itself. Uh, plus, you yeah. get the recommendation. So so it's wonderful that we have this testing now. And uh, the oral microbiome was kind of discovered when? Uh, late 1900s or early 2000, right? 2004? Uh, I'd actually say probably earlier than that. Um, one of the pioneers, actually, I, I would say... Uh, 
the definition of the oral microbiome would just be microbes in the oral cavity. Right. And then that would be Anton van Leeuwenhoek. The person right. Who oh, yeah, that's 1700s. Microbes. Yeah. 1700s. Right. One of the first experiments he did was he uh, he looked at someone's cavity. Okay. And he looked at someone's cavity and he and he said there were little worms in there. He actually saw lactobacilli inside right. of a cavity and he said right. there's worms that cause cavities and that's where it came from. Everyone right. was like, oh my gosh, worms cause cavities. Like I right. don't want these worms. Right. That's probably the the discovery of the oral microbiome, but not right. canonically yeah. as like a right. biome, more of right. just like a there's something that's infecting your mouth. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that was a discovery of germ theory, right? Mm -hmm. Essentially, yeah. Yeah, that was around. That's the same time. It's when yeah. um, the Swan Neck experiment, where yes, uh, filled it with nothing and right. there were no no flies. And... Right. Right. No. Uh, yeah. I'm just curious i mean i'm just amazed that it's taken us this long to identify it test it quantify it and now be able to make really qualified recommendations based on what i learned in dental school 35 years 40 years ago um th there wasn't much information it was just kind of like disinfect disinfect uh yeah. fill clean drill yeah. uh all of that and uh, scrape you know when it comes to gum disease and and uh, it's so much more sophisticated now, although not all of dentistry is on board yet because, you know, the older dentists, unless they're getting continuing education credits, which they're supposed to, and if they're focusing on the oral microbiome, they would know this. And, and so, but that's the great thing about this test. Um, uh, and again, I'll put a link in so that we can get to that test. So, so again, just to kind of sum, summarize, um, let, well, before we do that, let's talk about pro and prebiotics specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. and that's kind of where we wanted to go when we, when we first spoke, um, I think people, even practitioners are a little confused. You, you don't just take a whole bunch of pro and prebiotics and, and call it a day. Right. Mm -hmm. So what are your recommendations? It, it, if it's someone at home that's going to go see their dentist and their dentist maybe doesn't have a protocol, what yeah. would you recommend they ask? Maybe there's something they can do at home, obviously testing, would be a good thing. Where where would you have people start? And yeah. yeah. So um, I I would probably ask my dentist first. Like, like speaking for myself, I would say. So uh, do I have any visible signs of of disease? Mm -hmm. Right, because mm -hmm. you know, um, well, our our test is uh, highly accurate. Uh, there are ways. There are physical manifestations that we can't tell. Right. Yes. Um, so you could have a sore somewhere that is, mm -hmm. you know, deep in the back and it's extremely small and it's the start of something pretty mm -hmm. bad and mm -hmm. we would have a difficult time catching that. Right. Um, I would start there and then I would say, uh, you know, uh, hopefully uh, if you have uh, an informed provider, you can ask them, hey, do you think that there's any probiotics that can help me mm -hmm. um, that could help with managing my disease or, or improving symptoms of my disease? Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of them actually exist today. Uh, so there's been a lot of research on different types of, uh, microbial species that are beneficial in, in, uh, for, for certain things. Right. Um, so, uh, like for example, I'll, I'll give a really good example. Um, going back to periodontal disease, there's actually been a lot of, uh, clinical studies now that have shown the benefit of, uh, this one species called lactobacillus ruteri, uh, or ruteri. Mm -hmm. Um, as an adjunctive therapy for people with uh, bleeding gums. Um, and it's interesting because lactobacillus ruteri doesn't colonize the mouth. It's not normally in the mouth. Right. Uh, and the way that it works is actually a, a little strange in that it produces these compounds called um, bacteriosins. And, mm -hmm. and the one in the case of uh, lactobacillus ruteri is called ruterin. Uh, named after the species, mm -hmm. um, and ruterin can kill certain types of pathogenic species. We don't mm -hmm. really know how it does the killing, but it, mm -hmm. it can do it. Um, and for some reason, it's also very selective. <laughs> this this uh, antimicrobial compound can kill certain species that mm -hmm. can drive gum disease, and it's basically a specific de-weeder. Right. Um, and it it is technically a probiotic, but not in the form that we normally think of where probiotics, right. you know, they grow in the environment and, and they're like the lavender that surrounds uh, your peach tree. Right. Um, 
So in this case, this probiotic is actually very good at weeding. Right. Um, I mean, that's the beauty of the oral microbiome, right? When it's working well, it's very specific yeah. in its pruning and weeding, yeah. and it even feeds itself and helps select and and create that optimal ratio of bugs, you know, that population of all the bugs to each other. Uh, and prone prebiotics definitely do, do help in that regard. Something I wanted to say, uh, prompted by what you said just at the beginning of this segment, um, the thing I like about the bristle test or, you know, testing for the oral microbiome is often you mentioned, you know, go see your provider, see if there's any disease, but often I would say that the test is able to predict and see the disease before we start seeing the delayed yes. response to that disease, which is deep pocketing, bleeding gums, gum recession, cavities, the actual cavity itself. And that's the wonderful thing about testing. And again, the medical world has this. Uh, there are a lot of tests that, for example, you could test for insulin sensitivity with an A1C mm -hmm. test. And, and, uh, but what it's great because w gum disease is very difficult to cure. We literally just arrest the disease. A lot of damage is done, bone resorption, gum recession, and, and during the disease, and you can't really, it's hard to fix that, uh, but you can arrest the disease. So why not test now, even if you think you're healthy or young, whatever, um, you've always had good checkups at the dentist test now and, and find out, you know, treat any diseases in their prodomal, their early pre symptom, uh, awareness, uh, phase. And, and to me, that's so powerful, especially as a practitioner, I would, yeah. I would want all of my patients to be tested yearly because yeah. if I can pick that up quickly and see that they're headed down the road where the oral microbiome is getting disorganized and working its way towards a dysbiotic kind of uh, situation, then we can step in and the results are much better. They're also cheaper and they yes. take less time and they're less painful. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. Yes. If, yep. if someone had just told me, you know, uh, 15 or 20 years ago that the prevention route would be much less painful, I would have yep. done that every yep. time. Yep. Um, so many feelings that were completely unnecessary if I had just known, you know, yep, hey, exactly. you've got these microbes in there, like right. you can, you can change that by right. you know, weeding, seeding and feeding it. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> well, well, let's end it there. That's a great place to end. Um, I think it's, uh, I think this conversation was nice because it was a kind of a general overview of the oral microbiome and how it should be looked at and, and treated and, and, and measured. Uh, and I'm just so excited that the bristle test has really rocked my world. Uh, and yeah. I'm hoping that it, it, it really does that for other dentists because it's going to change how we practice and we'll be better at it. We'll be, we'll be heroes. I mean, all yeah. dentists typically want to be a hero to their patients. Yeah. They really do. I, 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 that sounds stupid, right? No, but, but it's, it's true. Totally true. I, yeah. I, I, I and, feel that way too. It's like, yeah. when we get, uh, when we get a customer that comes through and it's like, oh my God, like mm -hmm. this was eye-opening and I did right. this for 60 days and I feel right. so much better now, yeah. Yeah. or I went to a medical provider to get this thing because your test told me this, Right now I'm this much better. I'm like that there's no feeling, there's no other feeling like it. It's like you actually yeah. help somebody do something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I, I'm so excited and more is coming and, and maybe next time, you know, next month when we talk again about the oral microbiome, you just said something that reminded me of this. Maybe we could talk about specific examples yeah. of people that did get tested and they went to go see their medical doctor medical provider, because of yeah. a oral systemic type of connected yeah. a disease or, or, you know, connection there. That's exciting. And I, I know we've talked about some of them. Um, I think there was one example of, uh, of, uh, of intestinal polyps and, and mm -hmm. all that. So, so, I mean, and that's another part of the oral microbiome is that the oral microbiome is a driver with so many other systemic diseases, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, insulin uh, sensitivity, yeah. yeah, cancer, even cancer, certain cancers. Sure, yeah. uh, so let's talk about that next time. And and yeah. I think over over the next few episodes, we'll be able to connect uh, uh, all of this for everyone. And again, it all goes back to testing, which I, again, am so excited about. I'm, I'm so glad to be, uh, full disclosure, I am I am an advisor for Bristol, but, uh, you know, I turned down a lot of advisorships and, and, and agreements like that because I just don't, again, I don't get too excited these days. Uh, I just got excited about a new flosser. We talked about it earlier. 
I'm Instagramming on that now. I'm calling it a game changer. I, I don't like to use that term. I really do like this new flosser. I'll put a link in the show notes in case you haven't seen it already on Instagram. But anyway, testing oral microbiome and the availability uh, to, to you and be able to discuss these things with you is absolutely just, I'll say it again, game changer. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all the information. And, you know, if... Um, if you're not able to have this conversation with your dentist, then I think it's time to seek someone else out. We have a directory of uh, functionally minded dentists. Uh, go to askthedentist.com slash directory. All these links will be in the show notes. We write a lot about, we've blogged a lot about uh, uh, bristle, the test, uh, oral microbiome in general. We go back about five, seven years uh, I interviewed the uh, author of a book on the oral microbiome. One of, I think it's the first book on the oral microbiome. I think her name is, uh, it's uh, Cass Nelson Dooley. Um, to me, that was exciting back then. I get goosebumps just thinking about that interview. Uh, I, I would, I'll put a uh, link to that. It was just fun to envision what I've been doing yeah incorrectly for so long, although I wasn't recommending a lot of oral care products. I knew that there was something more to it, but, but, uh, I'll, I'll put a lot of links, uh, in, in the show notes that hopefully will get you excited. This should excite everyone, whether you're a practitioner or a patient, this will lead to solutions, uh, and, and benefit overall health benefits to everyone. All you have to do is understand how the oral microbiome works. So hopefully today's conversation helped a little bit. Any closing comments, David? Uh, not really. Um, What's your favorite? Let me ask you one question. What is your favorite way to feed uh, the, uh, is it, if you were to walk over to your refrigerator now or to your cupboard, yeah. I mean, is there any one food that when you're eating it, you're going, oh, this is good for my bugs. Feeding your good guys. <laughs> what would that be? Uh, feeding my good guys would be, uh, well, for me, I don't have any, I don't have gum disease. Uh, and so, uh, having high sulfur foods is, is right. okay. And, yep. and I, I really like garlicky broccoli. Oh yeah. Um, that's like my go-to and that's right. really high nitrate. Uh, right. And prebiotic. I mean, that's a prebiotic fiber. Very prebiotic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, broccoli or broccolini? Just broccoli. curious. What kind of butter? I'm good at broccoli. Yeah. I, I prefer the I prefer the florets rather than the exactly the totally the I agree broccoli. although there's probably more fiber in the oh, there's way the more fiber and broccoli yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. no I, I agree with you salted little sea salt some goat butter with garlic in it uh, put it in the oven bake it at 450 uh, that's usually we do that first and then we prepare our meal and then out comes the broccoli with the protein wonderful way to go I agree I also drop a little lemon uh, I just I put a little lemon on the broccoli because I like that's it. a good idea. It, it's like a sour garlic -y thing. Yeah, gives it a little zing. Anyway, David, as usual, fascinating. Thank you for all the work that you do. Uh, I know you're on this every day and you're uh, doing research and writing studies. And and I can just tell by speaking with you how excited you get about the oral microbiome because you understand that there's a lot more to learn about the microbiome. Okay, absolutely, always, but, always yeah. more to learn. But thanks to Bristol, thanks for the work you do. We're on our way. So thank you again. Uh, we'll, um, we'll talk again soon and, uh, we'll talk about other things. There's so much, maybe that oral systemic connection and how the oral microbiome fits Absolutely. into that. That's a big topic, but I think that would be uh, great to enact behavioral change in people when they hear about the connection about one little bug in the mouth and how it relates to Alzheimer's or heart disease. I think, uh, I think that would get people to start testing and going to see their dentist on a regular basis. So anyway, thanks for your time. We'll, we'll talk soon. Thanks so much, Mark.